Hey there weavers, welcome back. This is Grace with Tangled Webs Weaving. So I recently uh, released a video unboxing the yarn for a rug that I'm going to be weaving and today I am going to be threading the heddles. I got it warped onto the loom. It's just a two and a half yard warp so it was pretty easy. Um, but now I'm going to thread the heddles. It's a four shaft pattern that I am threading on an eight shaft loom and it's countermarch loom so uh, I'd like to use all eight shafts so I don't have to support the four shafts that are unused. So let's get started. Here is my loom with the warp set up and as you can see I've got my warp here and the bouts of my warp secured through my cross and what I like to do is separate my heddles by groups. I've separated these all out and counted them. They should match with half of my warp and it makes it a lot easier to know if I've gotten off track from the pattern. And if I have any heddles left over when I finish threading, then I know that I've made a mistake and it's just a double check. This is a fairly simple thread threading pattern. The first set of threading repeats is on shafts one, two, and three, and then four, five, and six. I pull off four threads. These first four threads correspond to the first uh, four heddles. So the threading is um, one, three, two, three. And I'm just going to thread these by hand. This is a uh, cotton rug warp. It's fairly sturdy and easy to just push through with your fingers. There's the first four. And that's a little bit, I'm going to tie that off just because I am a little bit short on it. It should be fine though. Take the next four and do the same thing. So the corresponding one three, two, three is actually five, seven, or five, six, no, five, seven, six, seven. So when I thread these 
I pull the thread that I'm threading off of my four bundle and I fold it in half and then just have that little loop and just push it through and then grab it. one four two four so this is a taquette threading pattern it is a um, warp faced weave
I've got all the petals threaded now and um, I need to pull the warp forward, slay the reed, and then tie it onto the front. This particular loom is a Bergman countermarch loom. It was built uh, in the 1950s uh, in Paulsville, Washington, which is fairly local to me. And it's ingenious in that it is a folding loom. So when I'm threading it, I can take the front beam off and put the treadle bar up here and rest my arms here to thread it. But to um, thread the thread, I need to put the treadle bar back down here. bar up here right now I won't put it in the um, in the pivot points so that I can move it and put it at a position that I like for threading the petals. Okay I changed my camera angle here so that you can see this better. If I take a bout of the warped ends and I kind of pull it up, pull it taut, you can see how they separate here. That is, makes it a lot easier to get my fingers in between here and not cross a thread when I am slaying the reed. So, sometimes with the back ones, you have to just kind of look back through the warp and get them in the right order. Better to do it now than to have to deal with a crossed thread behind the reed.
All right then, so I've got all of the uh, bouts threaded through the reed and tied with a overhand knot. And now I am going to uh, tie on to the um, apron rod. So I'm going to put my beater bar back in place. I'm sorry, not my beater bar, my um, breast beam. Bring this around here. Recently, I have learned to lash on rather than tying on my pork. And uh, this has worked out really well for me. So we're gonna go ahead and do that with this warp. And I'm going to, uh, I put a couple dowels on the corners and we'll back up here a little bit. Um, so these dowels, just these dowels right here, uh, just support the warping rod until I can get it lashed on. So. With the lashing on method, uh, you take, I take a cotton crochet thread and I've wound onto a bobbin. This is, uh, makes it easier to, to do the lashing itself. And we're going to tie the end of it over here. There we go. And then I am going to put my beater bar back a little bit so that I can have some room. And we're going to take each bout, and I've tied these in uh, one inch uh, bouts, and we'll just split them and go from the, go under and then over the warping bar. You always want to do it the same way. Under and over the warping bar. And it helps if you keep some tension on that. So I am going to, I think I will wind the warp back a little bit. Yeah, that works. All right, so we'll keep tension on this. We'll just keep going around. To the end. Um, you wrap this around a few times. And then it will pretty much stay where it's supposed to. And then you can come back and obviously these down at this end are going to be tighter um, than the ones at the beginning. 
So all you need to do, I'm going to wrap this a couple more times. So then just come back and uh, tighten them up like so. You can get a lot more slack out of all of it. Try and keep them lined up. And then go ahead and take that around and holding it taut, you can spin this last part that you had wound around and take up the slap that you just created. Okay. So it's uh it will slacken off a little bit, but that's okay. Just kind of make sure you're kind of spread evenly. They'll feel about right. And then maybe just take this around a couple times to Create a little bit of a knot. Can... Ah. All right, now this is very tight because I just rolled it. So we're going to go ahead and do this again. And just kind of trying to even out. And then take those dowels out. I like to let them break off a little bit in front. Kind of pounce it. And then tighten it up. Tighten it up a little more. And as you push on them, they will redistribute the tension across the warp. And I think we've got it. I hope you enjoyed this video and if you did please give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing to see the rest of this project. Thanks and happy weaving!